Dynasty Warriors 9 Empires. Personally, I've always preferred the Empire spin-offs compared to Extreme Legends and the base game itself, only because I like creating myself, putting myself in that universe and actually making relationships with those historical warriors and characters. But I was a little bit worried about this one, given the poor reception the base game of Dynasty Warriors 9 got. Hopefully, my worries don't actually matter. The Empire spin-offs have become my preferred games to play in the Musou series, both for the Dynasty and Samurai Warriors games, so I was really looking forward to sinking hundreds of hours into this new edition. Unfortunately, while this game is all about battles, I am also conflicted with how I feel about the game. There is a lot of missing content when compared to previous Empire games. Sadly, my favourite parts about the Empire's games have taken the brunt of this. The creator warrior system is hugely dumbed down, with only a few costumes and armour, but the overall creation of a unique person has taken the biggest hit. Every character you make will look the same after maybe 3 or 4. You can't even make a slim or slightly chubby person. Everyone must have a chiselled six pack. Moving away from this, my preferred style was being a free officer travelling the country, doing quests for peasants or quelling bandit attacks. This is now non-existent. There are no quests and there is no freedom as a free officer. If you become a high ranking officer in an army and then leave, you will just immediately get offers to join someone else. Nine Empires requires you to play it in a very specific way. Another thing which I was interested in was the open world. Unfortunately, it's almost completely pointless. As mentioned, there are no quests. You can only talk to people you meet a few times before you lose the ability to speak. Let me repeat that. You actually lose the ability to speak. And the enemies you face are the same bandits and animals which either give you food or resources. No new weapons, no upgrades, no recruitment, nothing else except food and resources. You can't even attack a neighbouring army as a surprise move, which I thought would have been an obvious design choice. Now, not all is bad. If you do become a ruler, you'll find there are plenty of politics to choose from that fit your preferences if you want to become a generous ruler or an evil tyrant. Recruiting officers is much clearer, if not a little too easy, than in previous games. It's obvious all the focus went into this part of the game. One of the biggest improvements is with the tactics and skills you can use. You can influence the battle by completing extra objectives to move the momentum of the battlefield to your favour, although if you fail, it'll have the opposite effect. Also, I love how you can reel off skills during combat, such as summoning ice or lightning, increasing your attack or healing yourself, each of which have cooldowns based on their strength. I love running up to famous warriors and unloading a disgusting number of different elements their way before they have a chance to even say hello. Another improvement is how many more cutscenes there are within the game based on your accomplishments and character relationships. While there are a lot of them, you will have some repeated during your playthrough, but with different officers. Still, it's better than the 5 or 6 you saw only once compared to the other games. The last improvement I will mention is my favourite of the bunch. It's the way your children fight in battle. Ok, hold on, hold on. In the previous games, you had a child and 5 months later they would fight by your side. It made absolutely no sense. Now though, once you have completed a campaign, the child will be born with improved stats and will take on an appearance based on the two characters who are their parents. It's just a shame that I haven't felt the need to play the game again after finishing it once. The last few things I'll touch on are how the graphics are stuck in the PS3 era, which may put some of you off. Honestly, for me, it's not really an issue as long as the game runs well. There are, however, quite a few bugs and glitches. Nothing game-breaking, but they are definitely there, especially 
when it comes to the collision of your players and objects. Combat is still fun. It feels a lot slower and has more weight to it than in previous games. Not sure why this is, but it didn't really seem to flow as well as it did in the last few games for me. Hmm, it's a very tough one for me because as I've played so many of the Dynasty Warriors games, there's not anything really new that's been added. If anything, a lot of it's been taken out of the game and uh, just been completely removed, not even, re even like replaced of anything. Like there's a bunch of politics, like I mentioned, and like the creator warrior system has been so dumbed down that you can only really make five or six unique characters uh, before something it just repeats itself it's a bit frustrating and I, there's a lot of systems that i do like in this game but they're just very half-hearted or they haven't quite been fleshed out and finished enough so it's easy enough for me to recommend it to people who've never played an empires game and to be fair this is one of the better empires games but it's still so lacking it's fun but once I completed one scenario, I'll be honest, I haven't really wanted to go back because it will feel too similar. It's so frustrating. It really is. I really wanted to like it like, a lot more than I do. It's good, but that's it. It's just good. It's not great. It's not a must play. Oh, I hate it. I hate when these things happen to franchises that I really like, where it's just like good enough, but it's better if you've never played them as opposed to rewarding both people who have never played the series and the veteran players. Oh.